Hello everybody and welcome to the War Room. This one is for the UFC 297 main event for the middleweight title. Middleweight champion Sean Strickland defending his belt against Drickus Duplessy. Um, okay, so two very, very uh, unique individuals. Uh, two two fighters that uh, certainly, you know, if I was looking at the rest of the division and mixed martial arts as a whole, I wouldn't expect these two guys to be fighting for, you know, for the, <laughs> for the highest belt in, uh, in, in mixed martial arts as a sport. Um, but I think that's that's fascinating for for a couple of different reasons. One, because the way that they fight, we all accept that there's something unusual about it, unorthodox. Drickus Duplessis, with with the awkwardness of his movement, he's got this kind of <laughs> he's got this kind of big puppy energy, is what he reminds me of. You know, like when you show up at your friend's house and they've got like a massive dog that's like three months old and it just doesn't know how massive it is. Like he's got that kind of uncontrollable bounding energy which sometimes can be really really effective kind of a bit like Johnny Walker in some ways like when because he is big and well conditioned and does move fast when he commits to something you have to give it respect and because because he's so unorthodox a lot of the time you see people that would normally be good counter punchers the likes of uh, Robert Whittaker you see him kind of like like waiting because he's not exactly sure what's coming at him and this allows Duplessis to flow through with really unusual combinations and he makes the most of this athleticism by fighting with this ebb and flow style it, it's it, it's it's very very difficult to deal with if you've sparred with someone like this then you're like you just kind of want them to hold still or you want a corner to put them in which of course in a sparring situation when you're sharing the mats is difficult you tend to find them you're chasing them all over the mats or in a you know in a boxing ring it's ideal because you can put them in a corner but in a cage you tend to find you have to really work hard to keep them trapped up against the fence what Sean Strickland does so well is is walk right into the danger zone right into the space where his opponents are most comfortable with throwing their favorite techniques and what he allows them to do is he allows them to kind of work out with their favorite techniques being kind of twitching in the pocket and reading and stifling things as best he can um but almost weathering a storm you know he, he accepts that a part of the process of him getting to his opponent is them getting to him while he's closing that range down and and this style that he's developed from sparring has has, has been has been crafted from the stimulus of hundreds and hundreds of different styles of fighters now when I'm watching these two guys, and, and we, we talk about this this uh, a, a bit on the, the Picks podcast as well, Ver Veronica and I, these aren't the kind of fighters that I'm going to go, hey, go and watch these two guys. If, if you're not a fan of mixed martial arts and I'm trying to find someone that's going to get you hooked on the, 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 the incredible levels that people can reach when it comes to martial arts ability... I'm I'm not pointing you in the direction of these guys. That doesn't mean that that what they're doing isn't of an elite level. It's just not it's not it's not got the 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 plethora that we would normally see from the likes of an Anderson Silva or an Israel Adesanya. These these particularly with Sean Strickland style, it's far more of a far more of a suffocating, um, overwhelming drip, 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 like, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's 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 almost torturous in the way that he kind of walks you down. Like like when I was watching the Abbas Magomedov fight, that's the one that always sticks out in my mind because that's the best example of what Sean Strickland's really good at. He's really good at dealing with people that are bigger, stronger, faster, have a, a more diverse skill set, and he puts himself right in that pocket where they start to unload their game, either with a little success or with no success at all, and then he starts to push them back a little bit with these prodding, pushing, just touch, 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 touch. And there's not really any wind up to them, which means that he's not then committing and extending himself. And he's not then getting caught and being, uh, you know, with, with, with counter strikes, but he, he's very good at kind of blanketing anything that's in front of him. And because of Duplessis having this ebb and flow style where he, he likes to make the most out of the sort of three meters in front of him. And it, it makes it makes his life a lot easier if his opponents respect that space between him and them. And this is where Sean Strickland's most likely going to be problematic for Duplessis because he is going to work his way through that space. Like, there is going to be a point where Duplessis is going to find himself backed up against the fence with Sean Strickland walking him down, not even necessarily cutting him off because 
the way that Sean Strickland fights, because he is he is so relaxed and he kind of, he, he, he just walks, he just kind of slowly walks his way into range. He's very, very energy efficient. With Duplicy, he's bounding and he's he's full of energy. So he's going to be springing around and he's going to he's going to have to use that energy to get away from Strickland. Like th- this is where the the economy of Sean Strickland's style again is going to really suit him over five rounds. Like Duplicy is uh, you know he, he's he's well conditioned. He he fights well when he's tired. Sometimes I don't know whether he's tired or not because of how kind of awkward his style is. He he seems to be able to thrive when he's fatigued and 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 that might be necessary in this fight. But I also feel like the times when du- Duplicy is fatigued, he's also pushed his opponent to the stage where they're quite fatigued as well. And because he d- he dwells better in that fatigue space, he tends to he tends to capitalize. The Derek Brunson fight a, a good example. See, Derek Brunson came out and wrestled him, forced him to work, made him utilize his, his athletic his athletic ability, his physicality, and that was obviously draining on him. But because Derek Brunson emptied the gas tank doing the same thing, by the time it got into the second round and it was now starting to get messy and quite competitive, this is where Duplessis starts to thrive. And then, as we know, at the end of that second round, he was able to land a couple of really good shots, ground and pound that got, got the towel thrown in. I, the, I I like the fact that Duplessis can function quite well when he looks very fatigued, but I also don't know as he's experience the level of fatigue that he may do in five rounds against Sean Strickland. Um, <clears throat> quick tale of the tape. So, Sean Strickland, 28 wins with five losses. Uh, Duplicy, 20 wins and two defeats. Um, Strickland, you know, a bit more experienced, but not a great deal. But obviously, you know, he's been in Vegas for a long while. He's been in a high level MMA gyms around the US for a while. So not only has he got the experience advantage, but he's also he's also been fighting with probably a better selection of elite level MMA fighters over the years in the gyms. Um, and I do feel like that's why I, I have to pay attention and respect the style that he has, because it has been crafted in those gyms against those fighters. I may not like the way that it that it looks aesthetically necessarily. I would much rather watch an Anderson Silva who can pick and ping you as you're moving in and get not get touched. But at the same time, what Sean Strickland's doing is is working and it's it's effective. And I feel like against the vast majority of people in the gym and in the cage, it's gonna work. And Duplicy potentially is gonna be one of those kind of fighters. Um both six foot one, both with a 76 inch reach. Um, Duplicy, he does switch his stance. He is, he does seem to me to be more confident southpaw. He's got a higher striking output than Sean Strickland, but that's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, 6.95 striking output for Duplicy, 5.82 for Strickland, which is very high still, uh, as you would expect from Strickland anyway. He does throw a high volume of strikes. However, the thing that makes Sean Strickland so good is not his offense it's his ability to weather offense it's his ability to do it safely to stay relaxed and not waste any energy and parry and stifle and allow people to just waste their energy at the same time as exposing their game and then that's where his strike volume comes up when they're starting to fade and starting to wilt um interestingly striking defense is 10 percent higher for sean strickland um something worth noting I do feel like striking defense is going to be a key in this one um see Strickland's striking defense is in in my opinion it's probably going to be better with with, at that close range because anytime Duplicy gets pressured he tends to reel backwards with his hands covering his head and I don't know I don't know how he's going to deal well I kind of do because I watched the Solditch fight (laughs) I, I kind of feel like when he gets put under pressure that high guard works for a short period of time before it starts to look a bit like panic. And then he starts to put his head in, in difficult and dangerous places because he's not confident at being in the pocket and catching or using a Philly shell and using that lead shoulder and that rear hand as defense. For for as for as as unusual as Sean Strickland's striking style is, his striking defense is effective and it's clearly been effective over many years. And I feel like Duplessis is gonna gonna feel that that defense because he's going to be wasting energy against it and 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 this I feel is where the fight is won and lost I feel like Duplicy is most likely going to start well he's going to start with confidence this is his 
destiny to be a UFC middleweight champion. He's landed in the division at the perfect time because of all the people that he could have fought. Like he could be stepping in there against Alex Pereira. <laughs> like he's the look of the draw. He's got Sean Strickland, and that's no disrespect to Sean. But if you're Duplessis and you're looking at all the potential people you could have fought at middleweight. I'll take Sean Strickland any day of the week. Like there are people who are talking about moving up weight classes because Sean Strickland's the champion. Do you know what I mean? So, so like Duplessis is going to come into this with a supreme level of confidence. Like I know I can hit him. I don't know why other people don't hit him as much as they should, but I'm going to be able to hit him as much as I should. And then when he starts to bounce off the guard or punch air and Strickland's now starting to get a bit closer and Duplessis starting to run out of canvas and he's skirting along the edge of the of the fence and tripping up on the fence and that's when it starts to look a bit untidy and I've seen that in Duplessis and I've seen that in less than 10 minutes and I know that if he doesn't have success in actually hitting and hurting Sean Strickland like Poetan did he's going to find himself in that situation. What else haven't I told you? So, uh, grappling statistics. Th this is something that Duplessis could potentially utilize well, but the risk here is that, and even with the first round against Darren Till, potential 10-8 round, he was still tired in the second round, even though he was in control in the first round. At the end of the first round, if you remember, Darren Till had a little burst, a little moment where the crowd got all excited. From that point onwards, Duplessis looked like he was, like he kind of, like, like he, you know, he was starting to really struggle fatigue-wise. I would say the same thing about Brunson. So even though Duplessis might invest well in the grappling, whether his conditioning will hold up, and whether he wants to ask that question of his conditioning in a five-round fight against Strickland again, is not necessarily something I think is is probably a smart thing to do. I feel like we might see grappling out of him if he finds himself under pressure, but that's also not wise because that is an, a further expensive energy in a position where he's already now under pressure. And Strickland, you know, 84% takedown defense. Again, he's a person that fights on the front foot. He stands on his back foot, but he's moving forward. So the majority of the people, like you picture him on the mat's extreme couture. It's a big mat, big cage around the edge of it. And, and I can just picture him chasing people around the mat, up against the fence, hitting them, they're level changing, he's defending takedowns, he's chasing necks, he's beating them up. I bet he's I bet he's an absolute menace in the gym. And I bet people really struggle to get away from him. And I feel like that's going to be the fight we're going to see here. Duplessis has to do something to stop Strickland controlling the space. And that's easier said than done. 28 wins on the record of Sean Strickland. 11 wins by knockout. Four by submission. His first UFC fight was a Rene Kachok. All of his other submissions are Rene Kachoks as well. So four Rene Kachoks on his record, but his his last submission was his UFC debut. So I'm not I'm not expecting a submission, but I also wouldn't count it out against Strickland, especially because if if he's able to fatigue uh, Duplessis and kind of manage Duplessis' decline in a safe way, he might find himself in a position where he can wrap that Rene Kachok up. Um. On Duplessis' side, 20 wins, 9 by knockout, 10 by submission. So he's a he's a very dangerous high-level finisher. 19 finishes out of 20 fights. Um, four guillotines, five rear naked chokes, and then the, the 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 face crank against Darren Till, which is pretty much a rear naked choke. <laughs> I mean, it was same position, same, same posture and everything. We know if he gets into that position, he is very strong at controlling. But I also feel like he's going to really struggle to A, take Sean Strickland down without a massive expensive energy and B, control him. Um, Sean Strickland is eighth for total average fight time, uh, two hours, 41 minutes and 29 seconds. But he's number one for bottom time position. He's spent, he spent just over half of a percentage of his time in the cage in bottom position. And that comes to second, uh, second position for bottom time at uh, 49 seconds. So in a division where Sean Strickland is not necessarily the biggest fighter, no one's been able to take him down and dominate him, or no one has so far. Is Duplessis the person to do it? Potentially, yes. But if it's not successful, what does his gas tank look like after one round, maybe two rounds? Especially if Strickland is the second most difficult middleweight active on the roster to hold down and, you know, has the conditioning that we know for five rounds. So he's, he's been five rounds six times, Strickland. His last seven matches have all been matched 
for five rounds. And we know that he can do that time. Um, Duplessis never done five rounds. Even if he's been matched, he's never made the distance of five rounds. So there is a question around at what point does he start to fade and how long after he's faded can he hang on? Because, you know, at times in, in his fights, like I think if you listen back to the commentary in the, the Till and the Brunson fight, there were moments where you can see the commentary, you can hear the commentary team and they're going, well, he's starting to look tired now, he's starting to look laboured now. And you, you see that weakness, that moment where someone like Strickland would start to start to salivate with excitement because you can see that the uh, the potential end is in sight. Um I expect Sean Strickland to to be able to 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 bully him as long as he can weather that early storm. And Duplass is a he's a big, bounding, powerful individual, quite unpredictable. There's no doubt that he could catch Strickland with something unpredictable. But Strickland is 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 from from what I can tell and what I've heard and from what we can see of his style, he is a he is a a, a master sparring partner. So he's probably done. I mean, how many how many first rounds has he done in the gym sparring with people that have showed up at Extreme Couture for two weeks to train? Like training vacation in America. We've gone to Vegas. We're going to go and train Extreme Couture for two weeks. That I've been in those gyms. I've been that guy that swings in for a couple of weeks and spars. Like that mat is busy all the time. And there's constantly new people coming into the gym. And, and anyone that's, 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 you know... Anybody that's doing anything in the UFC usually passes through Vegas at some point, right? And Extreme Couture is one of the bigger gyms. So I bet Strickland has had the opportunity to get some really, really good sparring over the years. And a lot of first rounds, a lot of first opportunities to read people and what they do and, and how well they do it. Um, it should be a good fight, this. I like a fight with a bit of animosity. I like a fight where I don't really mind who comes out on top. I'm kind of leaning a bit more towards Strickland now because I feel like there's more of an, uh, his style is more of an, an enigma for me, I suppose, because he does a lot of things that for many years I've been, I've been told and I've trained myself not to do and, and he's doing them and he's, and he's not, not really paying for it a lot of the time, unless obviously he's fighting Poetan, but you know, is Duplessis the guy to be able to do it? You know, I, I, I don't know. He's certainly very, very dangerous. But the question is, what does he look like after they've been fighting for three, five, eight minutes, 13 minutes, imagine, 18 minutes of dealing with Sean Strickland if you duplicy. Like, go back and watch the Brunson fight and and, uh, and tell me that you feel confident that he's not, not going to be tired at any point in 25 minutes because I think might be the, that, that might be the biggest danger to him is, is the fatigue that he's going to be forced out of him by Strickland. All right. I think I've covered everything, Answer Jamie. Is that all of it? Pretty much covered all of it. You're looking forward to this fight as much as I am. I know you're. I can feel it through the through the, the YouTube. <laughs> UFC middleweight title on the line. Sean Strickland, Drickus Duplessis. It's going to be a wild night. Enjoy. I'll see you next time.